Intense gravitational forces, sir. Computer identification. Our velocity readings are off the clock. All sensor equipment malfunctional. Internal base systems. Helena, you all right? Regina. Dr. Matthias? Yes, Commander. How are things down there? Nothing too serious. Getting back to normal. Get a medical crew to main mission. Alan, you all right? Yeah. Check with Reconnaissance and see if any of the Eagles are damaged. All right. Stop her. Call technical section. I want emergency repair crew on standby. Connell, check all sensors and scanners. Victor, what the hell hit us? I have no idea. I just know we're not where we ought to be. We've changed our position in space. She's not responding to treatment. No. Shock, headaches, double vision. We all experience the same symptoms. And recovering, except for Gina. Her condition seems to be deteriorating. Yeah, but her condition can be diagnosed, understood. What's happening to us out there in space is beyond explanation. Another solar system. Traveling. Some traveling, Professor. Billions of miles in a matter of seconds. 
seconds. Maybe our senses can tell us something. Paul, how are the repairs coming along? We're still working on them, sir. Well, the senses won't tell us how we got here. No. But they will tell us what kind of planets are out there. Regina. It's all right. I was up there again. Where? There were two moons. Just take it easy. Everyone was there. Alan, the commander, everyone. It must have been a dream. Of course it was a dream. Yes. Because they're dead. Helen and the commander, they're dead. No, 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 they're not dead. No, Regina. no, no. They're not dead, Regina. No. No, they're not. I'm not today. Tell me about the sun, Regina. Artificial gravity? Leave your positive. Velocity instrumentation? Now working. Data systems? Activating. Sensors? Repair and check. Meteorite screens? Operational and on the right. All output link ups completed, sir. Link up. You can see she actually has sunburn. She believes she's living on a planet in open air with sun, wind, trees. Mm -hmm. Something like deja vu. You know that feeling of, I've been here before. It's a common enough experience. No, it's deeper than that. And if it were classic regression, I could deal with it. She's convinced she's actually living another life. Her present life here on Alpha no longer seems to exist for her. Did you tell her we're in a new solar system? No. The only thing she relates to is this fantasy existence. And the most troublesome part of it for her is that she's in mourning. Mourning? She thinks both you and Alan Carter are dead. And why should this only happen to Regina? I mean, we all of us went through the same experience. I don't know. What I'm looking for is a connection between that experience and her condition. Well, now, it seems that we've been traveling faster than the speed of light, which means, of course, time might be affected. So, Regina might be living a past life or perhaps even a future life, but feeling it now. Commander. Checked all this? It checks out. Computer confirms there are nine planets revolving around that sun. Aim long range scanner on the third planet. Kano? See what computer has to say about the third planet? Third planet. Distance from the sun at 93 million miles. Diameter 7,000. 926 miles. Axial rotation, 23 hours and 56 minutes. Third planet is the third planet of our solar system. Planet's name is Earth. Moon velocity easy. Moon going into Earth's orbit. Earth. Moon base Alpha calling Earth. Come in, Earth. 
We're not receiving you, Earth. Possibly you can hear me. Computer forecast that we shall re-enter Earth orbit in 45 hours. Gravitational forces compensating steadily. Shockwave conditions not expected. Great. We can take an eagle down for a look right now. But we're getting no response to our signal. Something's wrong. Oh, come on, come on. Let's cut the talking and get going. Damn it. What is keeping the commander? We've guessed at all kinds of disasters. Mm -hmm. And we're still guessing. We can't calculate what might have happened to the Earth since the moon went out of orbit. Still no contact, Commander. Keep trying, Paul. Open all frequencies and put the signal on automatic. Yes, sir. Victor? A space phenomenon we don't understand shifts us billions of light years across space. As incredible as that is, I accept it. But to put us precisely in the exact orbit we occupied around Earth. I know less and less about this universe, Victor. But that's got to be more than chance. Yes. There's a logic to it somewhere, John. There is some frame of order. We may make all sorts of blunders. Wander off the path now and then. But ultimately, we belong where we belong, on Earth. I always peel. It's awful, isn't it? Oh, it's not bad. Oh, I hate being ill. I hate being inside so much. You're getting better now. Yes. I think it's because he's come back. Who's come back? My husband. Your husband? Yes, Alan. It's been so long. Why have Alan and the commander been away so long? You've been ill, and time gets all mixed up. But they are back now, aren't they? Now, look, don't upset yourself. You want to get better, don't you? He is here, isn't he? Alan is here, isn't he? He is here. Yes, he is here. Why doesn't he come to see me? He will soon. You will ask him. He will come. Please ask him. All right. I'll bring him to see you. Once we're in orbit, you'll have plenty of time for reconnaissance. But if you go down there now, and if for any reason we don't go into Earth's orbit, we'll lose you forever. But we are going into orbit. The computer confirms it. The computer. The computer can't even tell us why Earth doesn't answer our signals. And that's just another reason why we should go down there right now. No. Not until we're safely in orbit and have studied the situation down there. Alan Carter, please. Yeah. Could you come to the medical unit right away? Right, I'm on my way. Go ahead, Alan. And while you're down there, get something to cool the blood a little. What was that all about? I'm sorry, Ellen. She needed to see you, and I thought that shock 
might have a positive effect. Me? Why me? You're the shark. She thinks you're her husband. <sighs> I'll try to explain it as best as I understand it. Regina believes she's living in another place in some future time. Living in the future? Yes. Somehow she thinks of it as her past. This is her world. Anything, Paul? Nothing, sir. Commander, beyond normal radio and magnetic disturbance, there is no source of control signal, none at all. Signal or no signal, we can't delay telling the people on Alpha what the situation is. One thing we know, there have been some major geological changes on the Earth. To what extent? We'll soon find out. We're making a detailed radio map of the surface. Attention all sections Alpha. This is Commander John Koenig. The moon's velocity has stabilized, and we're moving into a holding orbit around the planet Earth. We may shortly be activating the first phase of Operation Exodus, a reconnaissance probe of the Earth's surface. This is scheduled as soon as the moon is safely in Earth orbit. Earth orbit. Earth orbit. Earth orbit. Earth orbit. Earth orbit. Ten seconds. Regina, 
Please, give that to me. No. Alan, help me! Easy, Regina. No. Give me the gun. The Earth's axis has moved between five and six degrees. That much? And matter conditions totally different. Have the radio map ready for you. In Europe, there's a completely ice age climate. But here in North America, large areas of deserts, you can see all these latitudes are just radioactive ash. What about cities? Um, Civilizations? Is there anything left of them? Well, but the only place that looks as if it might be able to support life is uh, this area here, a place called Santa Maria. Is there any indication of life? We just have to hope that some people made it. Regina? I thought her condition was a metal one. I thought so, too. Victor? Two brains. Commander Koenig, emergency, main mission. The scanners have just picked it up, sir. Let's see it close up. Seems we've found another moon. Well, it sounds familiar. It should. It's our own navigation signal. Another moon base. Somehow we've caught up with ourselves. Alan, prepare for immediate liftoff. We're going to take a look at that moon. Right. tube and we'll have to walk.
evacuation. Operation Exodus. Uh, where to? I can guess. How did they... they die? Their eagle crashed on the moon about five years ago. They were both killed on impact. Five years ago? A space vacuum preserved their bodies. The rest of the Alphans could have made it to Santa Maria. If they're still alive. And I believe they are. I think that's what Regina was trying to tell us all along. Well, we'll soon find out. Why are you going down there, John? I'm about to activate the first phase of Operation Exodus. Wait, John. Helena, we can't wait any longer. Then please, consider this. You saw what happened to Regina as soon as we came into Earth orbit. It's possible the closer we get to Earth and those other Alphans... Are the cells. What happened to Regina could happen to all of us. Bigger, please. Run out, please. Thank you. Faster. You've got to be joking. It is. And it's closing on us rapidly. If that other moon keeps up its present speed, we're going to collide with it. How long? 
48 hours. It still gives us time for a close look. A phase one probe. You'll only have 10 hours on the surface. We need at least 24 for total evacuation. Paul, activate phase one immediately. John. We have no alternative. If we don't get off this moon, we'll all perish. Under the circumstances, Hal, only you and Alan Carter should go. Your other selves are dead. And if our people are to go down, the medical implications have to be studied. Like you, John. I have no alternative but to go. Eagle now on course for Santa Maria. BTA 2200 hours Earth time. Good luck, Alan. They are going home. And heading back into future time. It's an interesting thought. There are signs of habitation below, sir. We know, Alan. We've seen it, too. Looks great. Pick your spot and set her down. Well, looks kind of different out there. Good landing, Alan. All set? Yeah. You've come back.
Colonel, Paul. Commander Koenig. This is the Earth, but not the world we knew. It's an Earth where perhaps we never existed. Or perhaps we have yet to be born. But apart from us, it's empty now. A civilization once flourished here, another Atlantis, perhaps. There are relics of them everywhere. Where are the rest of the Alpha people? Oh, for economic reasons, we had to disperse. They're scattered in groups like ours all through the valley. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What frightened them? They've never seen a living ghost before. They don't understand. They look like fine kids. They are. Our finest achievement. Whose are they? Sandra's and Paul's. Yes, the children are our future. And as our situation improves, of course, there will be more. That's a tremendous challenge. To bring back life to a dead world. Yes. And it was not easy. It meant the total sacrifice of all our resources. Eagles, life support systems, fuel sources. That was why you couldn't contact us. Yes, we've had to use everything to make this place habitable. Well, it certainly seems to be working. Well, it was a choice. A decision that had to be made at the very beginning. If this community had failed, there could be no going back. I think it was a wise decision. You should know. You made it. There was a terrible phenomenon. Like comets fighting in the sky. Regina was affected by it. Six days later, she was dead. That was when we came into orbit. Now Regina died too. Both at the same time. Hardly a coincidence. I had to see you to, to talk. Do you understand what's happening to us? All I know is that we were the same person once. Somehow, we became two different people. And now we're here in the same time. We have no alternative. We have to come down here. Seeing you was a shock for both of us. I accept it now. Did you know I married? Yes. You married John Koenig. There was so much to do, even after he died. Now that you're here, there's nothing more left for me. John Koenig is here with you, isn't he? Don't be frightened. My time here is finished. No. We could help each other. It's my own decision. You mustn't die. It's not death. 
it's returning to you, to myself, and through you, finding all those I love, including John. John. Commander Koenig, bring your people down here. And what happened to Regina, to Eleanor, will happen to all of us. We have no choice but to come down here. If we don't evacuate that moon, we'll all perish. You cannot do it, Commander. We have children, a future. We will not let you destroy it. We'll build in another place. We have exactly what you had to start with. Go back to your own place. There's nothing for any of you down here. Except destruction. Paul, there's no time to argue this out. Just get the word, Commander. It's our decision, not theirs. Wait. All of you. Paul is right. You cannot live here. Or anywhere on this planet. If you were to come here, there would be chaos and disaster. We know that Regina died when she confronted herself in her mind. Our Helena died when she confronted herself in the flesh. We are trapped in different times. But when those two moons collide, time will correct itself. Normality will return. There will be one moon, one community, one time. You must go back. Back to what? Sudden death? If you are not back on your own moon, when time does correct itself, you will have nowhere to die. John, take us back. Our place and our time is on Alpha.
it's over. We are in different space. I wonder if the others made it. If they survived. Did they ever really exist? Control. I can't take over. If he hits one of those domes, he could cause a nuclear explosion. No, that will need a specific stimulation with atomic fuel. He's gonna crash. Alan, get over there. Take a couple of nuclear physicists with you, just in case. Alec, Barbara. Keep your head down! Big Daddy's coming in! John, get out of there!
Moon Base Alpha status report. 1912 days since leaving Earth orbit. Dr. Helena Russell recording. Commander Koenig, while piloting Eagle 10, became suddenly irrational and unresponsive. He crashed in the area of the nuclear waste domes. It's a feedback complex, Maya. It takes brain impulses, modifies them, feeds it back into the brain. It's like a brain massage. Electronic. It is still experimental. Then you don't know the side effects. Is it worth the risk? If I don't take the risk, pick up configuration of a spaceship. Range? 90,210,000 miles. Heading? Directly at us. Medical center. Helena, how long before I can talk to John? 15 minutes at the earliest. He's linked to that brain complex, Tony. I don't dare break the sequence. Okay, thanks. Even at the speed of light, it would take that spacecraft almost an hour to reach Alpha. What happened to the monitoring crew that went out to the nuclear waste area? They're on their way back to report. Tony, range 40 million miles. It's impossible. That means it's exceeding the speed of light. 32 million miles. Well, we're lucky. Damage to that nuclear dome was minimal. Yeah, not a trace of radiation leak. The nuclear waste out here is stable. Yeah, it's going to stay that way too for centuries unless some fool drills a hot plutonium. Magnify. Alan, what do you make of that thing? That is a super swift. No, it can't be. <sighs> but it is, I tell you. A super swift never got off the drawing board. No, not before we left Earth. Things have changed. Physics hasn't changed. That thing is traveling faster than the speed of light. Sure and hell looks like the drawings are super swift. It seems like human technology to me. It could be from Earth. Now, whatever that thing is out there, let's not get sentimental about it. Tony, it's moving into land. Weapon section, arm all lasers. Open a channel. 
Moonbase Alpha to spaceship. Identify yourself. Repeat, identify. Moonbase Alpha to spaceship. Identify yourself. Repeat, identify. They're trying to come through. Coaching, it was difficult, but I made it. Okay, well, uh, listen, I got, I got a lot of stiff tendons around here, you know. Around here? <laughs> you got it, Tommy. You got it, Tommy. Word for word. Hey, oh, listen, listen. Hold it, hold it, everybody. Come on, now. Oh, now, listen, You're just try and contain yourselves for a little while. You've all naturally got thousands of things you want to know. You bet you tens of thousands. Okay, how are things back on Earth? Yeah, how are things yeah, back on the, Earth? The time it took us to get here, how we finally made it. When are we going to get back? Yes, yeah, when are we going to get back? And when yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, get yeah. back to Earth. All the whys and the wherefores. Now, look, just give us a minute or two to get our breath back, and then we'll have a nice, relaxed session. We'll answer all your questions. Everything you want to know. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. What is that? Come on, I'll introduce you. Maya, this is my brother, Guido. I'm his older brother, and his smarter brother, and his handsome brother. In every other way, he's a poor second. Put it there, old buddy. Certainly, old buddy. Is it always like this between you? No, no. I usually dominate him effortlessly. Oh, he has to have his little fantasies. It comes from the fact that I always stole his girls. That's because he can never get any of his own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I'll introduce you. Helena, this is Peter Rockwell. Hello. How are you? He's a pilot. We were going to get married when my tour of duty on Alpha ended. I've heard a lot about you. I thought I'd lost it for good. Never underestimate the extent of human inventiveness. You always did take that view. You knew each other before? Dr. Shaw was my tutor at medical college. He taught me everything there is to know about being a doctor. 
Um, what do you do, Guido? He's a cab driver. A captain the Super Swift that brought us here. It's a miracle anybody made it. <laughs> um, how did you attain a speed faster than light? Um, a little old Earth has progressed, you see. Um, physics came up with a new wrinkle. We can now make loops in the continuum. No, don't let him fool you, Maya. He hasn't got the faintest idea what he's talking about. Yeah, it was Reinhardt who made the breakthrough at Cambridge. Cambridge, England. Massachusetts. It means we can travel anywhere in the universe now. The journey back to Earth well, is just a bus ride in Earth time. We're just the scouting party. The big transporters will be along soon, and then it's goodbye moon for everyone. Oh, I can't wait. Maya? She'll be all right. How's Mama? You know, Mama, she's making you a mound of pasta the size of Vesuvius. <laughs> and the sauce. I know, I know. Everything in it but holy water. How did she take it? When the news broke that we'd blown out? Three days of weeping. And then two weeks of phoning the White House to demand action. <laughs> oh, boy, that's Mama. And then she finally decided simply not to believe it. The scientists were talking out of their navel as usual. It was simply a matter of time. And Papa. He went quiet. And he got thin. Yeah, sure. Okay, And where did you meet? Oh, somebody's pocket. You look a little lost. Can I help you? Perhaps later. Trouble? I bet she's been looking for John ever since she got here. She knew him before I did. Does that give her territorial rights? Well, you know Diana Morris. She's like the 5th Cavalry. Wherever she plants her flag is home. Oh, well, I think I'll just leave you to it. Oh, thanks a lot. Helena, darling, we haven't had a proper little chat. No, we haven't, Diana, but there's lots of time for that. Oh, you poor dear. It must have been terrible here. It's obviously been awfully wearing. I think space is generally very hard on women. How long is it that you've been, uh, what is it, uh, navigating officer? Still, there's something to be said for a maroon society. It does limit men's choices. And the women's opportunities. I've always made my own opportunities. <laughs> There are some of us who still prefer them to come to us. Hey, Clive, you're always with the camera, huh? Is there anything you don't get on tape? This is for the record. And this little baby's watching history being made. It's only one thing, Clive. Well, what's that? You won't get to be in the picture. How do you get along with John Koenig? Well, in a small community, uh, everyone has to get along with everybody else. Cozy. Do you uh, find him interesting? He's everything you said he was. I'm glad you can second my opinion. As a matter of fact, he's much more than you said he was. There are depths to him that I'm sure you never found out about. I must look for them at once. Where is he? At the moment, he is linked to an Ellendorf autographic brain complex. Oh, very wise of you, darling.
strategically placed so that from anywhere on Alpha we can keep a check on our patients. Such a good rational setup. Hey, why don't we get out of this heavy traffic, huh? I know a nice, cozy spot. If you wouldn't mind, Ben, I have some very important questions that I want to put to Louisa, you know, about the shape of things back on Earth, the configuration of the modern female form. Where have you got John and his brain machine? I'm dying to see him. Can't I see him? Please. I know he's lying. <laughs> Trying to kill Cody. It's all right. The cycle's completed. If it had happened earlier. Mike, what happened? Are you all right? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. What? Wait a minute, Ben. To kill ben, now just take it easy. Kill Coney? I have to kill Coney. <laughs> He'll destroy us. All right. He'll destroy us. Here we go. Here we go. Easy. Oh. <laughs> what about fashions? What does everybody wear? Well, there is a lot of silver about. Necklines tend to be a little lower. Now, where do you think you're going? Well, I, I didn't want to disturb the big reunion. What are you talking about? Well, I, I don't want to disturb everybody. <laughs> oh, don't be so ridiculous. You couldn't disturb anybody. Now, come on. No, no. Please, Tony. Um... I've got to check some computers. 
Maya. Number three. Hey, Credo. What I want to know is what kind of propulsion you use to boost you past the speed of light. It's a development of the ion rocket. Look, I always knew you were naive. Me? Naive? Yeah. But I never knew you were shy before. I do love your makeup. <clears throat> uh, Diana, this is Maya. How do you do? Maya is a psychon. Uh, she's the last of her species. I'm not surprised. Tell me, how do you manage mm, to keep so fit up here? Well, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We manage. Oh, do you jog? What? Jog. Oh. I do think exercise is so important to a man, don't you? I mean, I think it's so important to his physical well-being. Maya! I do a little yoga myself. You can get into some lovely positions. to the command on the eagle. Do you suppose it could have anything to do with Sandstrom going berserk? In what way? Well, could it be infectious? Contagious? I found no evidence of virus or bacteria in John's blood samples. over five hours. Five hours? You're lucky. You sculpted quite a bang. Without this complex, it could have been weeks. John, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? Everyone must have seen what happened. Rocket malfunction. Well, that's what it was, wasn't it? The investigation crew found no evidence of rocket malfunction. That means pilot error. That's terrific. John, it wasn't pilot error. We don't know what happened. You seem to have lost control of yourself. I don't remember anything other than going out to check that, that neutron count. John. A rescue expedition has landed here on Alpha from Earth. What? From Earth. They came in a super swift. Super swift? Tony's brother, Guido, captained it. And Dr. Shaw is here. Dr. Shaw? You remember Dr. Shaw? I've told you all about Dr. Shaw. Of course I remember Dr. Shaw. Very, very well indeed. And San's fiance, Peter. San's fiance. And Professor Hunter. Professor Hunter? And, uh, <laughs> Diana Morris. Diana Morris. Well, well. Now, Helena, please don't even joke about that barracuda. Only you're not joking. You really mean it. You mean they... Somehow something worked. Yes. You mean they got it licked. <laughs> They're really here. Yes. How we can get back to Earth. Yes. Oh, Helena. Yes, Helena. Yes. Helena. Yes, Helena. Yes, yes. Helena. Oh. Okay, give it the name. Give it the name. Give it the name. Keep the arms straight. Keep the 
the arm straight and it gets dry on the pole. I didn't know you had such a big thing going with Dynamo. Well, I didn't want to bore you with my romantic past. I wouldn't have thought she was your type. We were childhood sweethearts. Oh, Donna Morris was never a child. Would you believe we met in the jazz ballet group at MIT? Oh, you liar. I'm not a liar. The commander's on his way. <laughs> oh! John, good to see you back. John, darling. Don't come here, stay with me. John, it's my brother, Guido. What's the matter, John? This is Guido, my brother. Are you all right? Stay back. Don't come near me. What's the matter, John? Helen, what's the matter with you? Tony. Helena. Maya, what's the matter with you? What's wrong with him? Honey. Well, he's as erratic as he was up in the Eagle. John, they're friends. Tony. They're not your friends. They're... Calm down, I gotta say. Wait a minute. Listen to me. You'll be all right. Listen to me! You just calm Turn down! down. Status report, supplemental. John Coney continues his odd behavior. He has no awareness that he acted strangely just before his crash. With great reluctance, I've put him in restraint. Gotta get out of here, out of here. Things to be done, answers. Answers, gotta find answers to be found. John, take it easy. It's all right. Danger, danger, the entire base. It's in danger. Helena, can't you do People something? Think. Everybody I'm in the base. I'm trying, Tony. His blood danger. pressure's up. His adrenaline level is very high. Gotta get out. Gotta get out. Helena! Yes, John. Now, please, just take it easy. Those things out there, what are they? What do they want? Now, John, will you listen to me? Those are people out there from Earth. Now, you know some of them. They've come to take us home. They're not people. Are you blind? John, please trust us. Why can't you see what you've got out there? Dr. Shaw, would you please assist me? to flip out. Tony, Helena, let me out of here, please. I've got to get out of here. I've got no, Helena, don't, don't, please. No. You didn't let me, Vincent. 
out of your range, Koning would be dead now. He interfered. He escaped the eagle crash we arranged, and now this. Huh. He's hard to kill, this John Koenig. We can arrange to control him. Why fear him? He is a strong leader. His mind is no longer under our control. Something has interfered. He's in position now. There is resistance. I need help. Helena, could that medical apparatus have aggravated his condition? The complex was tested extensively. Ellendorf's results were quite impressive. I just don't know, Tony. His mind. Oh, he wouldn't just cave in, not John Koenig. trouble in the records lab. But how do you explain that wild ride of his on Eagle 10? And his claim that Guido and the others are monsters? Tony, I'm at the records lab. We have an emergency. Concentrate on candor. Traffic. trapped inside. Stand back. What about the door? Alan, wait. The emergency oxygen supply. He's got it full on. We have the whole place to make some suicide. Tony, I can get him to the air vent. Oh, 
Tony. I'm sorry about this tragedy you just had. I know this isn't the time to talk about other matters, but we're rapidly getting out of the range of Earth. And if we're going to get you all home, we have to address ourselves to the problem. There's a pilot ship that'll go back first. There'd be room for three people on it. If there's anyone you'd like to suggest, Tony, we should get to it as soon as possible. Yeah, okay. All right, everybody, this is it. You ready? Well, I think I'm more nervous than anybody. from Earth, I don't see what you see. What do you see? Something hideous. Something ugly and horrendous and hostile and deadly. Now, please listen to me. Please listen to me. Look, please let me get out of here! No, please, don't do that. Don't do that. Please, please don't do that. Don't you find it very strange that all the personnel on the rescue ship are people you know? I mean, close relatives and friends. What do you think the odds are against that? Aren't they pretty heavy? Not really. They're all volunteers, John. They specifically asked to come. said you drew lots to see who'd go first. Yes. That Ehrlich, Bartlett, and Allen were the winners. That's right. Now, don't you find that strange? The three men chosen are members of the radioactive monitoring team. Isn't that strange? John, I drew the names. What's the matter with you? Can't you see you're being manipulated? What's happened to your instincts? Why won't you listen to me? You're all blind! Hey, all systems are go here. What's the holdup, Alpha? Tony, the pilot ship is ready for liftoff. Tony, no. Don't let them go. Don't let them go, please. Helena, don't let them go. Don't, no, no, don't let them go.
Vital signs are very erratic. This could be causing his mental instability. Well, if there's anything more I can do. I'll ask. Thank you. All right, Maya. Let's see if he'll respond. John. John. John, Maya's here. She has something to show you. It's a recording. That's the pilot ship. That's an eagle. I can see Earth. It's blue, blue and beautiful. We 
getting close about a minute. They're in an eagle. John, why can't you accept what we all tell you? Maya, what do you see out there in the command center? People from Earth. Oh, I was hoping. I thought your different brain structure would have resisted their, their telepathic control. Who's telepathic control? Maya, when you look, you see people from Earth. When I look, I see monsters from a different dimension. One of us is wrong. Will you accept that it could be you? Well, that would mean, of course, that everyone else is wrong. Maya, I'm the only one on this base who is hooked up to that machine. Well, either the machine has distorted your consciousness... Or protected it. that everyone from Earth is somebody's friend. It's against probability. Everyone's a friend because everyone's out of someone's memory. Yes. They could have tapped everyone's mind and projected what they needed out of what they found there. They couldn't project strangers because people we've never seen can't be in our memories. Wait a minute. Maya sees these people too and they can't be in her memory. It is possible that they could project images from other people's minds into my mind. If they have control over our minds, why are they letting us have this conversation? Perhaps they're letting us for a purpose. Well, maybe they have to be present to exert that control. Right. Ben did say that he knew Sandstrom was trying to kill you, but he couldn't do anything about it. And then when Alan took Louisa away from him, he regained control of himself. And in the records lab, Candor, they took him over, controlled his mind. He must have made a discovery which threatened them. He didn't go berserk. They made him release the oxygen causing the explosion which killed him. If only we knew what it was that he'd found out. Now listen to this. We've been in space for months. In Earth time, that's generations. If they are from Earth, they have to be hundreds of years older than they appear. That should have occurred to me. It didn't occur to you because they wouldn't let it. The reason I haven't been able to control my mind is because I was hooked to that machine. There may be no causal effect, but it is a tenable theory. Helena, please, unstrap me. Do we tell Tony? No. Our best weapon is surprise. If we tell Tony, they may probe his mind and take away the one advantage we've got. Maya, would you let Helena give you the same treatment I had? The brain complex, John? Yes. Well, I don't know if she can withstand that. I'm willing. If the commander's right. Well, look, then it should be me, not Maya. No, but you can handle the machine. We can't. Helena, if I'm right, there are things Maya can do that you can't. Oh. You little beauty. Well, what's the first thing you're going to do, Joe? Find a golf course where I don't hit a mile. You? Me? Her name's Jeannie. How about you, Jack? Her name's Caroline. <laughs> She's five years old. She's got her mother's eyes. Hey, son. What would you and Peter like as a wedding present from little old Earth? Just to be there. 
Will you look at that weather pattern? I swear it's snowing over California. Hey, smile when you say that, man. Fly this crate in. This is New York Control reading you loud and clear. We have you locked into the computer. You don't have to do a thing. Just you sit back and enjoy the ride. I hear you, O oh Earth man. <laughs> Alan Carter to Moon Base Alpha. We're now going into Earth orbit and then on down for a landing. over like a flawless machine, as always. Good. Metamorph. 
So be careful. Don't ever ask me to do that again. They had the minds of geniuses and the instincts of vultures. What do they want, Maya? Well, there are species that live on radiation. Radiation? Yeah. It's the only kind of energy they can assimilate. It's what keeps them alive. What do they want here? Well, their planet ran out of radiation. They're starving. Unless they get a huge intake soon, they're gonna die. They want a nuclear waste dump so that wait they... Wait a minute, wait a minute. That could be beneficial to us. Let's give them our nuclear waste. It's not that easy. Why not? Well, they need a, the kind of intense radiation they will get from blowing up the dumps. Blowing them up? Mm. That would destroy us. Oh, that's why they've got control of our minds, so that we don't know what we're doing when we blow them up. Why haven't they just blown up the dumps themselves? Well, uh, they have very little kinetic energy. They don't seem to be able to handle physical activity. They plan to manipulate us into exploding them for them. How? By making us think that we're doing one thing when actually we're doing something else. It's what they did to me and the Eagle. Wait a minute. Helen, Bartlett, and Ehrlich. That's where they really are. Still on the surface. And they were flying in an Eagle. I still see the pilot ship. They're at the atomic waste dumps. They're going to detonate them. They can't do that without atomic fuel. There's your atomic fuel. That's the trigger to blow up the dumps. They won't do it. They won't know they're doing it. Computer, close and lock entrance to atomic fuel store. John, 
Where do you think you're going? Tony, I must have an eagle. Tony, listen to me. I stay back. Atomic fuel store. Now, how long would it take to process all our people on that machine? Make every one of our people immune to those aliens? It would take days. Days, John. Unless we can break the aliens' hold on our people. I'll never be able to save Alpha. There may be a way. Why didn't I think of it? What? I sometimes use a sonic anesthetic instead of drugs. It's called white noise, and it works by blocking nerve paths in the synapses in the brain. That would obstruct the telepathic input of the aliens. It would have to be amplified and transmitted to all of our people. All right, let's go. Helena, stay away from those aliens at command center. Otherwise, I'll take you over again. Will the sound reach them? 
They'll be getting it to their helmet receivers. But it won't be powerful enough if the aliens choose to block it. know about the white noise. They must be concentrating all their power on Allen, Ehrlich, and Bartlett. You said they were starving. Where are they getting their strength? Well, every piece of electrical equipment on Alpha emits a minute amount of radiation. They must be getting it from that. Hello. Yes? Cut all non-essential power. All except communications. Out. I can't see them, John. They've got to be down there somewhere. Alan, this is Commander Koenig. Do you read me? Alan. Alan, are you receiving me? Come in, Alan. Answer, Alan. This is Eagle One to Alan Carter. Are you receiving? There's something over there, to the left. Switch on scanners. There they are. Alan, Ehrlich, this is Koenig. Do you read me? Do you read me? Alan, do you read me? Alan, do you read me? Come in, Alan. Touch down in front of them, Tony. No, Commander. The terrain is too crumbly. With the weight of the eagle, we go straight through the surface. We'll use a harness. We'll drop me in front of them. Prepare to depressurize. Decompression complete. Lower away.
Bulkhead. Tony, Ehrlich's lost most of his air. We've got to get him back to Alpha fast. He needs to pressurize it. It's his only chance. Coming in now, John. Yes, Commander? There are aliens everywhere, all over the place. Well, they have no power to harm you, either mentally or physically. They need all of their energies to control Alan and Bartlett. He can't get through. They've got the door sealed.
Yes, Commander. How come the aliens are still controlling Allen and Bartlett? Everything's closed down. Where are they getting their energy? Well, the human brain generates electrical activity. There may be enough among the population of Alpha to keep them going at survival level. When people are unconscious, their brain activity is reduced, isn't it? Very greatly. Hello. I want everyone on the base knocked out, with the exception of yourself and the chief engineer. You mean unconscious? I mean unconscious. John. Don't argue with me. Can you do it? Well, yes, I can do it. I can use a contact gas. But John... Just do it. Out. return to normal. Careful, Commander. With everyone else unconscious, they're running out of energy. With what little they've got left, they'll concentrate on Alan. <laughs> they're still controlling him. Alan, listen to me. It's all right. It's all over. Is it? No. That won't help. You learn quickly, John Corning. That is hopeful. Hopeful? Hopeful for who? Yes, it is true, Buffett. You have been living inside an illusion. But haven't you been happy? Happier than you've ever been on Alpha before. Living your life reunited with your loved ones. Living, as it were, back on Earth. Yes, but it's not real. You've been living in a dream. Isn't it better to live in a dream of happiness than to face the reality? Robert, help me! You really face living out your lives, growing old and dying on this piece of debris? How long could the dream last? As soon as the nuclear waste is triggered, all, all human life on the moon will be wiped out. How long is a meaningless term, a pygmy's phrase? Time is relative. A butterfly lives a gloriously full life in a day. A single-celled organism in a microsecond. So long as one is fulfilled, time is irrelevant. Bartlett, don't listen. Help me. We can offer the people of health a complete life. 
as it would be with your loved ones in your own homes on earth. A life without pain or sorrow, without fear or loss. This is what we offer. Bartlett, use your laser! Son Alan! <laughs> It's futile to call on Bartlett for help. He's immobilized. that creature that you transformed into? Oh, a Laren. A what? A Laren. Its natural habitat was a moor of Sycon, where the atmosphere was very thin. Well, how does it survive? Ah, it has the ability to store oxygen, like a camel can store water. <laughs> and its skin is like a spacesuit, and it's very strong. Maya, put me down. <laughs> Maya, listen, will you quit fooling around? Put me down. <laughs> how much longer before they wake up? About ten minutes. Well, can't you give him something to speed it up? No. How am I supposed to run a base of sleeping beauties? It was your idea. That blonde, she might have been an illusion, but she wasn't. I said it was your idea. 